What's going on? It's Alex from Metal Master Kingdom. We're at the Upper House for a serious night of Maple Metal. And if you're going to have a night of Maple Metal, who better to be headlining this thing than Annihilator? And speaking of Annihilator, I'm here with the man himself, Mr. Jeff Waters from Annihilator. I thought you were going to say Exciter or Anvil or Voivod, but yeah, okay, Annihilator. <laughs> all great bands, we'll do, all we'll great do. bands. Yeah, all great sure. bands. Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. I'm really looking forward to seeing you. It's my first time, and it's going to rule. Yeah, it should be first, fun. I can't yeah. wait. So first of all, welcome back to Toronto, first of all. I'm going to mm -hmm. reposition myself ah, right. so I can look at him. All right, so Go ahead. All right, so, Good? Yeah, good? Did it screw up your focus? So it's been like over 20 years since you last played here. Yeah. Um, and I was only a year old the last time you played here. But uh, so I guess the question that everyone uh, pretty much wants to know is why? What, what took so long? No kidding. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. We we did well. Long history shortened. We did three records. Uh, 89, 90, 93. They did very well. North America and especially the rest of the world. And um, 93 hit. Most metal bands were kind of dropped from their labels. Like it's a, it's a period grunge. of time that a lot of people don't remember because they're younger. Yeah. Uh, but literally, uh, record companies were sending out memos saying drop any band that has the word metal in their bio. Unless it was Sepultura, Biohazard, or Pantera style, like a, a newer metal style, we were all gone, like most of us from North America. Um, I was lucky because a lot of bands did lose their deals everywhere else. Annihilator, for some reason, was able to keep... Uh, our fourth record was bigger than ever in Europe and Japan for us. The biggest one we've had in, in Japan. King of the Kill? Yeah, and yeah. so that was uh, cool that you know it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was that was very lucky, and that brought us up even to a higher level, which was amazing at that point of our career. And that sustained us um, through the slight metal, dr traditional metal uh, drought that happened until, I don't know, 2000 and a couple of years, you know, 2002 or whenever it was that it seemed to come back. Right. Just uh, continue to put records out, and we're working on our 16th studio record now, but we, we kept putting records out and touring overseas, uh, but couldn't get deals in Canada or the States. Um, and I literally just said, ah, screw it, you know, like, if I can't get in there, well then, I won't be in there, thank God I got a career somewhere else. People like what I'm doing. Um, and it wasn't the t kind of music that was popular in North America, it was typical 80s Melodic heavy metal meets thrash metal, and that's not what was going on. It was more yeah. of a, a like besides the Seattle scene, there was yeah. and Soundgarden, Alice in Hell, you, or Alice in Chains. Chains. I got that right, yeah. Um, you you did have the newer metal with Pantera and and that, and sort of more of a I guess they called it hardcore Machine Head. You know, they changed this style, and yeah. and that was what was popular. Um, yeah. Fortunately, the rest of the world didn't for us didn't really wasn't always based around trends or what was popular. They, they still honored the older school stuff. Now that it came back, um, years and years ago, I thought, uh, stupidly, that I could just sort of waltz back in, make some phone calls or send some emails out and talk to some companies that I knew in the States and Canada and bring the band back and give it a shot. And I knew I'd have to work hard at it, but uh, didn't realize that the doors were kind of slam politely slammed. It was always like, well, it's great that you have had a good career going all this time, but you know, we're signing younger bands or we're signing bands that are, I don't mean this in a bad way, but stupid enough to sign these horrible record deals where the, the, the labels are owning your merchandise, tour profits, yeah. publishing, owning the rights to your music. So that was went against me. Also, I was not playing the, the uh, in kind of metal music, the good music, but it was, yeah. uh, that was in, but it wasn't what, what I was doing. And lots of other reasons that we're not a new band, so labels are more prone to putting money in to promote uh, younger bands. Yeah. And a whole list of them. Um, and, of course, some could be the music that we were doing. Lucky for me, uh, everywhere else has been going up and up, actually, for the last 10 years, to playing at European festivals at 2 in the afternoon and 6 o'clock at night, and now literally co-headlining with even bands like Slayer at some points and, and festivals. And, uh, yeah. So it's it's been very lucky for a fifty year old guy to be able to from Canada to be able to play traditional ladies metal and thrash and uh, still keep going. Yeah, phew, because <laughs> you guys rule, man. You guys deserve all the respect in the world. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, no, but but then again, yeah. There's uh, promoters like Noel here in, in Toronto who uh, said, well, "Yeah, you guys haven't been here for a while. Do you want to come back?" And people, uh, some people in Ottawa, uh, Heavy MTL brought us there, uh, Festival d'Été in Quebec City. Um, 
you know, Calgary Metal Fest. So, you know, slowly people are kind of discovering our band, and uh, some people even ask, is this your third album or second album? And, you know, you had Alice in Hell and Never Neverland, but did you have one after that? And you, you explain, no, we've just been away for a while and overseas, and, mm. and this is our 15th album we're touring for. And, yeah. and I've been lucky that, that some Canadians, and now, now finally some U.S. promoters are starting to go, well, forget the record companies. Uh, people seem to want to see the band, so yeah, yeah, awesome. I hope, hope yeah. everything I works hope so. out for all the the fans in North America wanting to, yeah. to see you guys. I'm glad to be back just in Canada yeah. doing these shows, even. Yeah. All right. So, Suicide Society, album number fifteen for Annihilator. You're singing again on this album after the departure of Dave Padden. I'm trying. Yes. You yes. sound good. <laughs> I have to say, you sound great. Now, you've already sang on uh, King of the Kill, Refresh the Demon, and Remains. Yeah. Uh, do you envision yourself continuing handling lead vocals full time, or do you think you may uh, start looking for another singer again in the future? Yeah, well, the first record I did was called King of the Kill, and that was um, at a time when we were dropped from our label Roadrunner yeah. and told that where our career was basically done. And we got re signed by Music for Nations in England and a Japanese label and publishers and all this stuff over there. Yeah. Became a huge success, but I had done that record singing only because I always sing on the demos to give to my singers that I've had. Because uh, I write most of the, the stuff, so I'll yeah. sing on it and send them at the time a cassette of me singing and say, "Here's the the idea." Um, so my my friend and uh, former sort of co-writer on some songs like Alice in Hell and King of the Kill songs, his name is John Bates. John I Bates, yeah. started the band with John in Ottawa in '84. He said, "Why don't you just sing on it?" Because I like your voice on the demos, and I said, "I can't sing. I'm a guitar player." So I almost did that as a last resort or. A, kind of, uh, well, I don't have another singer in mind. And I did it, and again, it became like a number two album on the main charts in Japan, which was just ridiculous because I thought my career was pretty well over. That propelled me into having to learn how to play guitar and sing on stage and go on tour and do it for a few uh, years. Mm -hmm. Then I got kind of tired of it, thinking that, you know, I, I like guitar most and I want to concentrate, and it's, it's very physically demanding to play guitar and sing. It, it gives you... Uh, gives me ten times more respect for James Hetfield, Dave Mustaine, and those guys that play and sing yeah. and play this technical guitar stuff too. Yeah. It's, it's incredible what they do, actually. Um, but I didn't think about it, and we, I hired some singers over the years that were really great. And Dave Patton, our recent guy, was in it for 12 years playing guitar and singing. He was amazing. Yeah. Uh, he left unexpectedly. We, we had no idea it was coming, and for personal reasons. I decided, well, what the heck, I mean, this is our 15th record, uh, I don't really want to go through looking for another singer, there's only a couple of guys that I ever want to work with, anyway, Stu Block, but he was already nice to earth, yeah. uh, a couple other guys, and they're all busy uh, doing some good work, so uh, I said, yeah, I'll do it again, but if I'm going to do it, I can't do it with the attitude of, ah, just do it to, to do your record, and yep. you got to take it seriously, so I, I worked really hard, very quickly, and uh, didn't get in the greatest shape, I'm slowly still working on getting in shape, but... Uh, it was, again, it was just a bigger album than we've had in 14 years, more than 15 years. So I'm stuck doing it, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to have to do it until I physically couldn't do it or, uh, or, or really show that I'm not having a good time doing it. <laughs> I love it. It's fun. It's just a lot yeah. of work. Yeah, true. And I'm not the greatest singer, but yeah. I just, uh, I think it fits for now. I, well, we can always get a better singer in a band. There's always room for, in most bands... For something to get better, but it's just at this stage of my career, fans in Europe especially are saying, just stay and do it. You know, just do it. Do what you got to do. I mean, yeah, you sound great anyway. At least in my opinion. we'll see you tonight. Eh? Vocally, vocally, <laughs> you sound great on, on the on the album. So, Thanks. and it's an amazing album. But Feast came before it, and that was really well received. I yeah. love that record. Um, was there a lot of pressure on like following up Feast? Yeah, I think again, especially in Europe, and well, obviously. You still here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, there's always pressure. If, the al if an album doesn't do very well, you got pressure because you you get this uh, you know primal uh, fear of uh, oh my god, is my career finishing? Or you know, I you just don't want to be. You want to work hard at it and do your best. And uh, if the album goes really good, there's pressure there because you know that you can't keep writing a great or good album every time. It just doesn't happen for everybody or anyone. Yeah. Right? It's True. Bands don't have 15 great albums, you know, like yeah. Judas Priest and Maiden, Slayer, they're all my favorite bands, and Metallica, but there are definitely some CDs in 
every, all those bands' catalogs I own, but I don't listen to. I mean, everybody. I everybody has preferences to what they like. Exactly. And quite frankly, artists, if they're honest with themselves, sometimes they write really awesome classic stuff, and sometimes they write crap. And it's, yeah. it's not necessarily because they're lazy. It just doesn't come out sometimes. Yeah, it's true. So yeah, Feast was a bit of pressure. It always is. Yeah. Um, so you try to block it off when you're writing, and a year later you look back, or six months after you've done a record, and if you're honest with yourself, you, you, you rate it, and you go, oh, that wasn't so good, damn it, i got to do a better job next time, somehow. Um, and Feast was up there. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Amazing. So, last year, uh, you played 70,000 Tons of Metal. Yeah. At that show, or right. on the cruise, you had, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you had Coburn Farr, who sang on Never Neverland, yeah. to come up and, and guest with you. Um, talk about how that came about and what's he doing nowadays. You still in touch? Well, I was. Uh, yeah, I talked to him on Facebook once. He calls me sometimes, like once every couple of months or a month. Uh, and we talked always. We were always talking, seeing how we're doing in our personal lives and stuff. And he, he asked what the band's doing. I asked how his business career is going. Um, and uh, just came up that it was. I think he had even mentioned. I think it's 20 or 25 years or whatever since Never Neverland album was released. And I said, I even thought about maybe I should actually give it a shot and find the old guys from the, the lineup. Uh, got a hold of all the other guys just, you know, carefully to see how things were going and, and found that three out of the five original guys from that album couldn't tour, physically tour. Um, so that idea was out the window. So I said, well, why don't you just come down to the boat cruise, relax, and uh, come up and do a few songs. So that's pretty well how it was. I just did two or three songs uh, each time we played. and. It was amazing uh, hearing a couple of those songs with his voice on it because he he was the most amazing guy in that he had his own style. You knew it was him. It was just like a... And he sang on our best record, basically. Our biggest selling, but it was actually our best record. Never Never Let, I think. Um, so he had his style, and that's hard for a singer to find. Yeah. And that's it. Just talk to him once in a while. Maybe he'll come on the cruise next year or... Just meet us in Florida, say hi for dinner or something. But uh, he lives in Florida. He's not Florida and uh, California. Okay. And Carolina, I think he lives all over the place. Mm. Nice. So um, I really like the metal album that you put out in 2007. That was the album that you had like a lot of uh, like special guests on each track. Uh, yeah. And that was also around the time uh, I discovered you guys because I got in got into you guys through Trivium because mm. you you got he, they took you guys out in Europe. Yeah. And the Cord Bolio, he guessed it on the album along with Willie from Land of God, Alexis from Children of Bodom, Jesper Stromblad, uh, Dan Danker Jones, Angel Gasso, many others. Um, talk about how that process, like, how long did it take to coordinate everybody, and do you think there may be an album like that again in the future for Nile? No, uh, but it was fun to do once. Um, it was kind of like I had this idea having breakfast going, oh, what if I call Pinky Downing or Dave Mustaine or. You know, I can get these people on my album probably, and and then I remember Fred saying to me, you know what, don't. I mean, because that was in a, a time when uh, there was a tenure, 1997 to 2007, when our sales uh, and popularity in our big territories in Europe and Japan went down and sustained there, but it, enough to keep going, but it was, it was not like it had been before. So that album, I, th I was kind of fighting, do I maybe get something that might attract some interest and I took a Trivium tour which was one like you said because Trivium at the time were packing three to five thousand seater yep. venues in the UK and we were packing Germany so we kind of did a, a trade on the touring there yep. but they were very big and yep. uh, big, way bigger than us in, in, in the UK yeah so uh, we worked that tour and it was great and it brought us a lot of new fans a lot of new fans over in England and some other parts yep. um, and on the internet from the Trivium fans in North America found out about us but the idea of putting some guests on there, uh, a friend of mine said, well, why don't you just not like shoot for the stars and get all these people you know that are famous and, and big and all that, and get people that like your band. And I was like, hmm, yeah, I guess that makes more sense. So I called up, some of them are friends, like Michael Watt and, and Alexi and, uh, and that, and Danko, and said, would you guys love to play or like to play on a record? And they were all like, yeah. You know, so it was, it was very quick. Everybody said yes. I was one of the few people, I'm sure, in the music business that did not have any problems with record companies and management and getting rights It was and payoffs. I didn't pay one person a penny for any of that. And if you actually go behind the scenes and see how that all works, managers and labels get involved and there's a payoff or there's a percentage of something. And, 
and that and everybody stepped back, including management and, and labels, and said, yeah, no, no, that's Jeff, go for it, annihilate or whatever. <laughs> so they, they just uh, let, let me do it, and it was, uh, it was amazing. When it was all done, that record was done, I sat back, and it wasn't that, wow, we did a, an album that was pretty good, it was more like, oh, how did I get all these people on the record was the big accomplishment for that one. Yeah. And that was the year, coincidentally, that our sales started picking up. And our nice. popularity started picking up, and since that album, it's been picking up for the last uh, nine, nine years. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Like I said, good gimmick. Amazing, good amazing gimmick. Amazing album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we were talking about Coburn Farr just earlier. Uh, who are some of the other uh, past members that, that you just don't touch with? Are you in touch? You touch with anyone from yeah, like Al Al Allison Hell, like Randy Rampage, uh, Ray Hartman, Wayne Darling? Not Rampage. He doesn't seem to be an internet guy. Lost track, but I. I Keep tabs on them through friends in Vancouver. One of them is uh, Ray Hartman, the, the drummer, probably the most tasteful drummer in our band ever. Um, was on the first couple of records and a few after that, of course. Uh, yeah, Neil Goldberg was on Set the World on Fire. Mike Mangini, of course, Street okay, Fisher, yeah. he played on three of our records since the yeah. early days. And, uh, and Joe Camo? Joe Camo, once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, not much, not mm -hmm. much. But, you, you know, you, these days you know how it is. Sometimes you don't really have contact with somebody, yeah. but you know what they're doing, and they know what you're doing from Facebook. So. How about, so, how about uh, Randy Black? Yeah, talk to him uh, yeah. when uh, we lost our drummer who's actually, I think, playing tonight in War Machine, huh. Mike Harshaw. Um, he, he came buzzing around on Facebook saying, hey, you need a drummer? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, was, I was into that, but it uh, didn't work out. But uh, we right. found uh, this guy here who actually played with Skull Fist, Small mm. World. Mm. I don't even know what the question was. Yeah, I talked to some of the guys. Yeah. <laughs> so to wrap things up, yeah. Monday you'll be in Ottawa. Yep. Over a hometown show. And then uh, next weekend you'll be in Calgary for the Calgary Mel Fest. Yes. That'll be, and then you're at the end of October, you're heading back overseas for a headline tour in Europe. Yeah. And then uh, you're <laughs> starting off... more than I do. <laughs> then you're starting off the new year with 70,000 tons of metal, as, yeah. we, as we mentioned. Um, what are the plans for uh, touring in 2017? I'm pretty sure you'll be doing more European festivals. A lot yeah, of studio yeah. work. And I think you'll be writing another album. A new album. Yeah. yeah, we've been writing off and on in between what we've been doing, but it's been a really busy time. I have guitar clinics with Epiphone that I do in Europe and uh, around the world, and uh, ah, there's non-convention stuff being talked about with us and just a lot of stuff. But it's a good time to be too busy and to, you know, like partially we know our schedule and, and what ha happens is you get a schedule and then something even more cool comes up and all that. So it's a good time to be uh, us in Annihilator right now. We'll see how long that lasts. But um, yeah, working on a new record in between everything. And uh, oh, yeah, there's something else. There's a five disc uh, Blu ray set coming out in the new year. Live show in Germany, a concert we did. Uh, we, did a, we went back and picked a bunch of songs from the past because Annihilator have not only, you know, heavy metal hard rock styles and thrashy stuff. We also have love songs or ballads or instrumentals. So we took, uh, I guess, 10 or 11 of those songs. Some of them are the ballads. We did them acoustically, even some we took the heavier songs and made them lighter. Uh, but we did it really cool. It's a, we didn't just sit there and do a crappy production. We, we did a really cool live record. Nice. Very cool. And then uh, a little mini documentary thing that, that might be interesting, hopefully. Try a different spin on that because I know a lot of times I'll get, you know, buy a DVD or Blu-ray set from a band and you'll see the concert and it's like, okay, and then you're not there so you don't get the same feeling. Uh, and then there's backstage footage and it's kind of like, cool if it's your favorite band, but, you know, for most people it's like, okay. So we try to do something a little bit different. Just life, life being us for three months this summer that we did. So you can see some interesting uh, sides of us, I guess. Hmm. Good and bad. <laughs> but yeah, so that and a couple audio discs that go with that and... In the meantime, time trying to do a record. Nice. A good one. Yep. Yeah. Well, everything you do is great. We're looking forward to, yes. to, to the DVD and, and also the new records. So, again, thank you very much, Jeff. It was great you. talking to you. An honor. Yeah. Uh, do you have any closing words to the fans? I don't know. Just if you haven't heard of us, Annihilator. Heavy metal <laughs> band, man. Lots of different styles Canadian. in there. Canadian. -y. Uh yeah. I'm a big fan of Canadian music, uh, but also United States, British, German metal, everything. Japanese, Akira Takasaki Loudness, there you go, um, and our music has lots of different cool things in it. You might like one album, you might not, but you'll like something in there. Good awesome. live show, good live show too, you'll see tonight. You can rate it and give, it, give us a 5 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 for a live show. Nice. You heard it there folks, Jeff Waters right yeah. here. So. 
Keep your eyes and ears open up for any news regarding Annihilator in terms of tours and shows. Get the records, get merch, anything you can, okay? Uh, I'm Alex. You can watch RealMasterKingdom.com. Peace. Thanks, Alex. Awesome.